uh, I'm very happy to be here today. Uh, so you know that between 1908 and uh, 1911, um, there were so many demonstrations in the late Ottoman Empire. And uh, especially for the political developments uh, in the island of Crete, and uh, there were um, general uh, protest movements throughout the empire. And after the occupation of Izmir uh, by the Greek forces in 1919, eight protest uh, gatherings uh, were held in Istanbul. Uh, so today, uh, my presentation uh, focuses on demonstrations uh, that took place in the occupied Istanbul uh, due to the transition of Istanbul's administration uh, to the national government in October and November 1922. Uh, so the Turkish War of Independence um, resulted in a final victory in Anatolia at the end of August 1922. Uh, the Mudanya Armistice was signed in October 11th. And according to this uh, armistice, Istanbul and Eastern Trace would be gradually evacuated and handed over to the Turkish national government. Refet Pasha, Refet Bele, later Refet Bele, one of the high ranking officers in the uh, national army during the War of Independence, was appointed as the official representative of the Ankara government in Eastern Trace and Anatolia. It was announced that Refet Pasha would arrive at Istanbul on October 19th. The defeat of the Greek army uh, in Anatolia paved the way for the demonstrations in Istanbul since the beginning of September 1922. Uh, Refet Pasha's arrival in Istanbul led another wave of demonstrations which reached its peak on November 5th after the abolishment of the Sultanate. With the arrival of Refet Pasha, thousands of people filled the streets with great excitement to celebrate the triumph of the national government. Refet Pasha was welcomed as a hero by the Muslim community of the city and was welcomed with banquets and official visits. So this paper uh, explores the politics of emotions and emotional re rhetoric in the construction of the Turkish national identity as soon through the demonstrations that took place after the arrival of Refet Pasha and the abolishment of the uh, Sultanate. Uh, inspired by the conceptualization of emotional communities, put forward by Barbara Rosenwein, I argue that different emotional communities played an important role in the welcoming ceremonies of Refet Pasha. Uh, so this presentation suggests that the speeches delivered and slogans used uh, provide a good case for understanding the politics of emotions and emotional rhetoric of Refet, Refet Pasha and uh, public. Uh, the spectrum of emotions encompasses very different feelings, such as joy, enthusiasm, happiness, patriotic love, excitement, and honor. Rosenwein defined uh, emotional communities as social communities, uh, like families, neighborhoods, parliaments, guilds, monasteries, uh, and the membership of parish churches, which define and assess same feelings as valuable and also harmful to them. And uh, she further states that an emotional community is a group in which people have a common stake, interests, values, and goals. So uh, this presentation argues that the people who attended the welcoming gatherings and demonstrations in Istanbul uh, formed emotional communities. Uh, Refet Pasha visited various schools in Istanbul, um, including Darül Finun, uh, the medical school, school of civil administration, teacher training college, municipalities, orphanage, refugees, and Ottoman Red Crescent society. So by visiting these emotional communities, which have different emotional standards of their own and delivering speeches there, he aimed to construct and cultivate the Turkish national identity, as well as to unify the society around the common emotions. 
Uh, at that time, newspapers were filled with information about the preparations that began in Istanbul days before the October 19th, when Refet Pasha would come to Istanbul. Uh, for instance, the Daily Sabah wrote that Refet Pasha, one of the great and glorious commanders of the great Anatolian army that succeeded to rescue Anatolian Trays, is honoring to come to Istanbul, and this is heralding a happy day for the city. Uh, the newspaper devoted a large section uh, to the preparations made to welcome Refet Pasha, mentioning that great Anatolia was triumphed and came victorious in its struggle for life and freedom, and did wonders not seen in recorded history. So the entire Muslim and Turkish population uh, of the city began massive preparations to welcome Refet Pasha, the honorable commander of great Anatolia. The city was decorated all over and magnificent arches of triumph were constructed in various places. Istanbul is full of joy. This city is experiencing such an exceptional and spectacular day for the first time after conquest. The victors have also rejoiced Istanbul, which was deprived of joy all throughout the last four years. Furthermore, it was noted that from the most crowded places to the most remote corners everywhere was decorated with red and white flags. From the richest Muslims and Turks to the poorest ones, everybody has decorated his or her home with flags and huge portraits of Mustafa Kemal and other important figures. On October 19th, Refet Pasha has left Mudanya together with its subordinates and at dawn, the people of Istanbul preparing for a week to get ready for that day began to fill the streets. At 3 p.m., Refet Pasha arrived at Kabataş among the intense applauses of the people. Abdul Mejid Efendi's military assistant, Mayor Remzi Bey, was among those who got on the ship and welcomed Refet Pasha. He said welcome to Refet Pasha on behalf of Abdul Mejid Efendi. And in his reply, uh, Refet Pasha said that Abdul Mejid Efendi is the crown prince of the office of the Caliphate and one of the pledges that we had made from the beginning was to liberate the office of the Caliphate. Therefore, I thank him. Then the young students of Darif Finun and Medical School shouldered uh, Refet Pasha in the midst of crowded people's jubilant cheers. In the meantime, flowers and confetti were raining from the around. On the way on both sides of the road, his convoy was applauded crazily by the people and the students. In his first address in Istanbul, Refet Pasha emphasized that the people of Istanbul felt sorrow and agony the most in the last three years. He claimed that the people now burst with joy and enthusiasm. He added that Istanbul was very important for the homeland and for Turkishness and stated the following. I am quoting, today I am very excited having witnessed the feeling that the sensitive people of this beautiful city who felt the sorrow and agony we have gone through in the last three years now burst with joy and enthusiasm. It is very difficult for me to express my feelings, but today I have once more seen and felt without doubt that this nation, which got the sovereignty into its own hands can now accomplish great things. I have seen with tears that these people, although still going through the sorrow, has taken the credit for adopting the sovereignty and clinging to it with great sacrifice. Thanks to God that I had the chance to see how this great nation raised its forehead and kept it high above with so much dignity. I have understood once more that how the sensitive and proud the people of this great city were attached to their national aims. 
As we have always mentioned, Istanbul is the mind, soul, and light of the, this great homeland. Uh, there is no Turkishness without Istanbul, and there cannot be one. Uh, in Istanbul, I have had the joy and honor of fulfilling the great duty of greeting our beloved nation in the name of the entire people, in the name of the women, and in the name of the children. The enlightened people of Istanbul felt the most agony that the nation has gone through. The difficult days that we experienced will always lead us to perseverance. Let us defend the homeland. By working with the will, we should try not only to heal the wounds, but also to attain the welfare above the other nation's welfare in a short time. After this speech, Refet Pasha visited uh, Fatih Mosque. Here, Ziabe, the mayor of the city, paid uh, their respect to Refet Pasha on behalf of the city and the Minister of Interior. Refet Pasha said the following to Ziabe, I thank you very much for this congratulation conveyed on behalf of the city. I also thank the kindness exhibited by the Minister of Interior. Our government is totally a democratic government administered by the people with national sovereignty. But I do not recognize a Minister of Interior on behalf of my government. Uh, at Fatih Mosque, uh, there were also the students of Dar el Finun among the people who welcomed Refet Pasha. One of the students, Sureya Efendi, said that Students of Darul Funun have been sent to the war with pleasure in the most depressed times of the country. It's our honor to be present before you today. For two days, Istanbul's Turkish and Muslim people are applauding you with very joyful excitement. Today, the Darul Funun, the heart and mind of the Turks, is welcoming you with the same joyful excitement and the same overflowing enthusiasm. In his speeches, Refet Pasha aimed to ignite the patriotic emotions of the people of Istanbul. Uh, in her pioneering book, Marta Nussbaum argues that patriotism is a strong emotion taking the nation as its object. It's a form of love and thus distinct from simple approval or commitment. This love involve, involves the feeling that the nation is one's own and its rituals usually make reference to that idea. According to her, love can be based on different uh, sorts of personal love. For some people, the nation is a beloved parent. For the others, the nation is seen as a beloved child. In this context, she reminds us that patriotic love can also be addressed to the region or the city. Here, the term beloved was interchangeably used for the nation and the Vatan homeland. Refet Pasha often took a romantic mood by designating the nation as my beloved nation, my beloved Vatan. When he addressed the assembled crowd from the balcony of Kadiköy municipality building, Refet Pasha has frequently used the expression of my beloved nation, stating that my beloved nation that has my blood and soul, that has the same fate and the same fondness for the homeland. The effort spared by the homeland by Anatolia and all that bloodshed was only for you. Uh, furthermore, it's claimed that patriotic emotion seeks devotion to a story of the nation's past. The story of the past includes not only the glorious things, but also sufferings and then commitment to the future. Uh, for example, uh, Renan and Renan argues that a nation is not simply a physical location, it is an idea, a spiritual principle. This spiritual principle involves, on the one hand, a story of the past, usually a story of 
adversity and suffering, and then a commitment to the future, a willingness to live together and face adversities for the sake of common goals. In his speech in Dar el Funun, Rafet Pasha constructed a historical narrative in the history of the uh, Turkish nation. He has emphasized that Sultan Mehmed II has Islamized Istanbul and gave it to us. This great project is completed by Sultan uh, Selim I, who made Istanbul the center of the caliphate. He further remarked that this reality completed by the two sultans is an eternal fact and that Istanbul will be the soul and spirit of the Turk and the Muslim forever. Another point highlighted by Refet Pasha in his speech is that it is not possible to determine the number of Turks who have sacrificed their blood in various places since time immemorial. He further said that those sacrificing their blood had ideals, and while some were trying to attain to run, uh, the others were running toward the unknown red apple. When talking about the importance of the state, he pointed out that uh, this state did not come into being from a handful of tribes. He articulated that uh, before the Ottoman Empire, uh, there was the Seljuk state. The Ottoman state was established after the collapse of the uh, Seljuk state and saved the Turkish nation from falling apart and re-established the Turkish state. He further claimed that what happened to Seljuk state also happened to the Ottoman state, that the state and the nation fell apart uh, the homeland was almost in captivity, that it had already gone, and that the national honor was in danger. Uh, Refet Pasha very much emphasized that this ideal was the ideal of a nation, the ideal of nationality, the idea of the principle of national sovereignty. Uh, in Dar el Funun, Refet Pasha further stated uh, the following regarding the National Pact. Uh, he said that National Pact is decisive and scientific. It is far from being imaginative and far from the invasive ideas and is totally constructive. Our National Pact is drawn by calculating the necessary needs of our nation to live, like calculating how much air a person needs to live. Refet Pasha often made references to eternal homeland, free homeland, and independent homeland. Uh, so it is important to remember that the concept of homeland and the borders of the homeland had changed throughout the Turkish War of Independence. Until 1921, Mustafa Kemal and other leaders did not put forward the Turkish ethnicity. Instead, they adopted a territorial approach and used the concept of the common Watan, namely Anatolia, to obtain the support of all Muslim groups for the armed struggle. But after March 1921, they modified their discourses and emphasized uh, the significance of Turkish nationalism in the defense of the national homeland and the formation of the new national state. Uh, Refet Pasha also tried to ignite the patriotic feelings of the children by emphasizing the importance of homeland. For example, in the orphanage in Chalayan, he addressed to the orphans arguing that the eternal and independent homeland was made possible thanks to the orphans' fathers. He continued saying, the nation mostly owes this day of salvation to you, and you felt the biggest agonies and sorrow of these days the most. You are left as orphans. This grief is the most sorrowful grief a child's heart can feel on the face of the earth. But you have gained the homeland at the expense of this. The pure, noble blood abundantly shed by your fathers, the sacred Turkish blood, has bestowed an eternal homeland, a free homeland, 
an independent homeland and a glorious mother to this nation today. So the defeat of the Ottoman state uh, during the Balkan Wars, uh, during the First World War, and then uh, the <coughs> occupation of Istanbul by the Allied powers were uh, traumatic events and were associated with the emotions of fear, humiliation, sorrow, agony, uh, grief, and revenge. On the contrary, Refet Pasha's arrival to Istanbul was narrated with the use of positive emotions, such as joy, enthusiasm, pride, and honor. In other words, the defeat of the Greek army in Anatolia and Refet Pasha's visit as the representative of the national government in Ankara were regarded as reversing humiliation and restoring honor. By emphasizing the superiority of Turkishness after the bitter experiences gone through the beginning of the Balkan Wars, the establishment of an honorable regime was aimed. Refet Pasha pointed out that the Turkish nation is the greatest power under the sun, and by taking back the right to live again, it raised up again and then only God was greater than the Turkish nation. He further said that, be delighted, be proud of yourself. Until today, no other nation did what you have done and achieved. After the abolishment of the Ottoman Sultanate, Refet Pasha announced to have taken over the administration of Istanbul on behalf of national government. On November 5th, a huge meeting was organized in Sultan Ahmed Square uh, with the participation of thousands of Muslim uh, inhabitants of the city. The daily newspaper Tasvir Efkar wrote that thousands of flags were waving in Sultan Ahmed. It was argued that three years ago, during the occupation of Izmir, there were black and mournful flags in Sultan Ahmed Square, but now red flags took their places. In this uh, demonstration, in this meeting, first Ismail Hakkı Bey gave a speech stating that everybody's heart was full of divine excitement and the terrible disaster of the past was not forgotten. While in those times, the most important places of the Holy Homeland were occupied by the enemy, the orphans, and the wretches were being killed. But now, with the help of the God, and thanks to our heroic nation and army, we are at peace. Then um, so many people uh, from Dar el Funun, including uh, the teachers and uh, students, uh, uh, delivered uh, speeches. Uh, for example, uh, Muslahattin Adil Bey uh, delivered his speech in which he emphasized the date of November the 1st was not only a special day for the Turkish nation, but also it divided the world history into two, and that from now on then there was no domination of the kings, or emperors and that national sovereignty was established. So in conclusion, um, Refet Pasha's arrival in Istanbul uh, created a spiritual and psychological mood of organic unity of the Muslim community of the city and emphasizes the togetherness of the nation under the banner of Turkish national identity. The common emotions expressed provided the discourse in the construction of the Turkish national identity. So various small emotional communities came together to form a greater emotional community of Turkishness by the way of defending the national sovereignty. Thank you. <laughs>